a tell on the public at all. You can find all the information online with a little research. Yeah, well, we're experimenting, but, you know, we can't talk about it because it's too controversial. We don't want to upset the public, so we keep them in the dark. We just don't keep the issue confused. And you know, um, National security, we can't talk about it. But the idea is this aluminum concoction powder crap. It reflects the sun back on itself, and the theory is supposed to cool the earth. Well, actually, and in fact, the science proves it does the opposite. It's, and then what it, we're breathing this crap, aluminum. You know what it does to your brain? Look into it. The effects of aluminum on your brain. We're breathing it in. I mean, metals, it's well-known fact, can be aerosolized, powdered, vaporized, steam. Like steam, you're breathing it. Metals. Can you imagine that being absorbed into your system and into your brain? It, it's like they're doing a lobotomy on us. But, I mean, any time they want to spray a biological, what, what stops them? They've been doing this in a clandestine manner all along. But it's a sinister ploy, my friends. And this homelessness, I'll tell you, you know how sinister I believe this to be? This is why we should all find it, find it so outrageous. Let's establish better men and women than us might be dying out in the cold. And Jesus and Christ, Christ himself said, whatsoever you do or fail to do for the least of these, you do or fail to do for me. Okay. We're spending, what, a lot of accounts, over 100000 a year in some cases to keep one inmate in jail for a year, knowing that desperate poverty has driven the vast majority of crime that's been committed by these people. And then we look at these homeless and we say, well, this is okay. We justify this somehow. They're drunks. I, I know what people say. I know what they think. You hear about it. They're disgusting. They're riffraff. I mean, get rid of them. Go in a shelter. Do something. Go hide, you know. Don't be seen. But it's totally unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. And the reason, this is what gets me so crazy, the reason they're doing it, okay, I've concluded, and I'm more and more certain, this is how evil and vile and diabolical, evil genius, mean MFers, these people are that create the policies at the uppermost echelons of power in this world. And it, and it trickles on down. So it's all emanating from the top and affecting you in your local communities in a very nasty, mean, divisive, divisive way, okay? It's demonic. That's what it is. It's like the big demons up there, and then they spawn their little demons on all of us on a local level and get us at each other's throats. Oh, we're all offended. Oh, you're this, you're that. Ooh, ooh. All small-minded and petty pissants because that's what they are. They're the top ones. But they need it so that they can point to incentive to all the tenants out there, the tenants, the captives, the renters. Oh, it's getting hard to crack that nut? You better find a way. Because look, see what they've got right there. You understand? Right there. That's you. That's you climbing under the bridge. You understand? It's unspoken. Nobody's talking like me, are they? That's it, though. That's it. That's what I figured out. Is that evil? And all those landlords out there, property managers, real estate agents, bankers that are out there lending money, outrageous to people out bidding each other in these homes, all these people walking around with millions of dollars from Bitcoin. Hell, if you invested 100 bucks in Bitcoin, what, in 2011, whenever it was a dollar of Bitcoin, you know how much money you'd have, what, 50, 60 million dollars right now for one $100 investment 10 years ago. So all this money, people buying second homes, or investors are vaunted, oh, the great investor business. You're wonderful. You own how many homes? How many tenants? It's like, it's sick. It's perverse. Calling ourselves a Christian nation. Leaders of the free world. And you're not ashamed? You don't understand where I'm coming from? What I'm appalled by, what I'm upset by, what I'm passionate about, it's disgusting. We're a fallen nation. And the sooner we can admit that and confess it, the better. America's nothing like our forefathers intended. Nothing. In the Constitution, I got a right to pursue happiness. I've got a duty, an obligation to my fellow human beings. I've got to be happy. I've got to help spread. If you think you're enlightened, you've got a duty. you you, you got to give it away, man. You got an obligation, a responsibility. Okay, we've been duped badly. 
to believe that housing values going up is a good thing. That's like telling you the worth of your money going down is a good thing. I mean, that is, it's the same thing. You understand? If, so if the mainstream media was coming out and telling people that's the argument, people are worried about the property values going down. So they're not coming out saying people are worried about the worth of their money going up. But it's the same thing. You get what I'm saying? It's like, it's, why not say that? Well, because we're trying to mind F you. You understand? We're trying to, we're, we're trying to steer you. We're, we're trying to manipulate you. Okay, and, and we've got to keep you stupid. You see, we don't want you educated. We don't because then you'd be empowered, and and then you would have confidence to speak to people in an irrefutable manner, setting down uh, the, the the facts, ma'am, just the facts, like Joe Friday on Dragnet, right? Just the facts, ma'am. Just the math, ma'am. You know, and the, I'm always talking about the federal labor department that they could have stopped this whole currency debasement scam because that's how they've normalized slavery just keep watering down the money how do you think they that they carry this national debt that's going on 30 trillion dollars well how do you think they carry that they just water it down just pour some more water in there dilute it but the minimum federal minimum wage worker you understand who's been enslaved and all the other wages that are tied to that minimum wage. You understand? They all look at that number. So the boss says, what the hell you asked for, Ray? How dare you, you, you uppity little piss ant. I'm giving you 15 bucks an hour. You're getting five bucks over the minimum wage. How dare you even think of getting asking me for a raise? You know I got young, strong immigrants coming in all the time. These are hard workers. And they know how lucky they are. So, uh, see, unsaid, we're talking about it. But that's the truth, isn't it? That's the paradigm. That's just the way it is. And that is the system, the established system, the status quo system. I'm told that I should conform to and comply to and capitulate to. And you too. That's normal. That those are the learned people at the colleges and universities. They, they choose the curriculum, what to teach and what to omit. Ethics, nah. Golden rule, nah. See, we don't need any laws. If people just treat each other the way they want to be treated in their business practices, we wouldn't have any of the problems we have. You think we wouldn't have universal prosperity? Of course we would. Okay? And the evildoers are ready. They're ready for people to all figure this out. That if the labor department, for example, had just been in there, they could have. They would have been. It would have been a check and balance. It would have been like playing the game of chess. It's like you know you can't move there, because I mean the employers will be bitching you out, voting you out of office. Okay, all the business interests out there because you're raising their cost for labor. They'd say, "What do you mean you're giving them a cost of living adjustment?" The labor department would come out, and and defense of the minimum wage workers say, "Look, look, they're just trying to stay even, Stephen." If we don't give them a raise for all intents and purposes, mathematically speaking, they just got to pay decrease. How do you justify that? So with a little bit of passion, just a little bit of passion on the Federal Labor Department's part, they come out in defense of the minimum wage worker. They say, no progress. We're not asking for any progress. But the federal minimum wage was set at a certain given standard of living. You got that? A little, little bit of passion, just a little bit. And then we would have had the conversation, right then and there. Who are the what are the causes? Who are the causes? Where's the this uh, disruption in the supply chain? Why don't prices keep going down in this arena or that arena, for this commodity or that service? What's going on here? We want to get to the bottom of it. We the people, not some of the people, all the people. You understand how it would have stopped it in its tracks? Never would we have this currency debasement. So what's going on? They're in the pockets of Federal Reserve, as are the Congress and Senate and the executive branch, like Obama being very instrumental at bailout of 08. I, I, just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. This is what's happened. Now, you understand the, the, the dire straits we're in, how far down this demonic rabbit hole toward hell they've dragged us, and how traumatic and hard it's going to be for some people. 
What the hell do you mean the price for the? I paid five. But my real estate agent told me housing prices are going to go up forever. And this is a good thing, and the property values, and, and this wealth imbalance, and less and less people in California will afford to be able to be homeowners, and that's a good thing, because the investors are coming in, and they're buying up all the fixer-uppers, there's no more fixer-uppers, because they 